Hello and welcome to Rising Stars. I'm Vikram Oza. Now there's continued startup action in the EdTech space. We've had a significant influx of uh, Rising Stars from EdTech on the show and today's no different. While preparing for exams can uh, be a very specialized area of education, uh, but here's a personalized learning app that caters to students from 8 and 12 standards. Topper is the one that we're talking about. It started up in 2013 in Mumbai as an online exam preparation platform for practice and tests that aim to complement the classroom coaching uh, for students. So what's the journey been like and uh, what does the future hold for this company? Zishan Hayat is here to tell us that uh, story. Zishan, welcome to Rising Stars. Such a pleasure Thank talking you. to you and uh, you've been on the channel before so it's time to uh, cross-check with you how the company has done ever since you started. Yeah, you work with some deep structured content and powerful adaptive algorithms uh, but tell us exactly what the business does and how it's fared so far. Sure. So, Topper is a learning app for 5th graders to 12th graders. It supplements your school learning. Yeah. Uh, it supplements uh, your classroom learning with lectures, practice material, tests and doubts. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you can watch video lectures at your pace. You can practice as many questions as you want. You can ask doubts 24-7 on a chat-based module. Uh, it's a premium platform. You can sign up for free and then once you exhaust your free trial, you can choose to upgrade or not. Yes. So it's a large setup that you've got already. I would imagine that the cost that you incur in keeping this entire mammoth enterprise going mm -hmm. would be enormous. Mm -hmm. uh, so the sales costs are quite high from what I'm seeing right now. Mm -hmm. uh, do explain to us about the entire model that you've created to be able to make sure that the number of subscribers who are uh, buying into Topper right now, that number keeps on increasing in incrementally and obviously you must have set certain targets for it as well. Sure, so, uh, so we have a sales team of about 200 people, Pan-India, mm -hmm. these, these sales, uh, the sales team is present in 12 cities. Right. So there are about 20-25 sales people in each city uh, and to cater to one city using 25 people, sales people uh, in a consumer model is I would say not very high, okay. uh, <laughs> uh, but no, so we have a large uh, task ahead of us, right? So there are millions of students who need to be aware of the product right. and try it out and then upgrade. So, so obviously you're saying that social media, etc., the, the new kind of uh, avenues available to kind of get in the, the user base is not sufficient. So social media, digital marketing will help you uh, create awareness and help you acquire the customer mm -hmm. but the sales team is required to convert the customer from a free user to a paid user. And this despite having a freemium model? This despite having a yes. freemium model. Uh, so that doesn't help sufficiently enough as well? Yeah, so I think both of them have their jobs. So uh, social media and digital marketing for user acquisition and then your sales team for conversion. Right. Payment. So tell us about the tech piece that you created because again it's the product, it's the experience that needs to have uh, the edge over the rest of the competition and yes. obviously to keep those uh, students as well yeah. uh, to migrate from the freemium model into uh, paying users as yeah. well. So yeah. uh, how have you worked that out uh, considering there is uh, enormous competition in this space? Yeah, so I, I mean our biggest cost is the engineering cost. Yes, uh, as how much company, would that be? Uh, that would be about 50% of our total costs. Is uh, it? Yeah. Uh, so our, our, we are heavily invested in engineering and product management. Uh, we are spending a lot there because ultimately for our users, the user experience and what the experience on the app is, is what matters. And uh, we have to create very deep content so that it suits every person's, every student's unique need. Mm -hmm. uh, so all that uh, rolls up in, into the product part. So that's the high cost that we have to incur so upfront. Is, is that the challenge then? Because obviously a major portion of the cost, like you said, product development is going to be a part of it. Mm. And obviously a lot of uh, the kind of experienced teachers that you need mm. to build uh, these models, these test papers, etc. That's an ongoing kind of routine. And I know that you've added uh, the iOS app as well yeah. uh, to make sure that you have a larger base. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's ongoing, but it's also like front loaded in some way, right? So. Even when we are 100,000 users, our costs are still going to be there. And when we are 10 million users, the costs are going to remain what they are right now on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. So on a per user basis, they might seem very high right now because of the smaller user base that we have. Right. But when we are 10 to 20 million users, it will be much lesser. We, we have to pay the costs up front. All right. So what is the funding situation right now? Because I know that you've had a couple of rounds of funding, uh, but there is an enormous burn in this kind of business as well, as uh, we've just enlisted the kind of cost that you've incurred. Mm -hmm. uh, where does it stand right now? So we are funded by some of the best investors in India, Safe Partners, Helion Ventures, and Eight Roads. Uh, these are some of the best tech investors, venture capital uh, companies uh, that are backing us. Uh, we've uh, raised $12 million uh, across two rounds so far. Uh, and yeah, like going strong. 
but uh, also you have to dilute a significant stake to be able to get that kind of funding as well. And the funding need hasn't kind of ended over here, right? With more expansion, you're going to need more funding. So Ho how much uh, stake are you willing to dilute to be able to do this? Hopefully one more round and then we should be set. Uh -huh. uh, we are, uh, we are, I mean, our revenue situation right now is very good and we are getting close to profitability. Hopefully in the next 12 to 15 months, we should be, uh, we should be shooting for like a profitable uh, state mm -hmm. beyond which we will not need funding. Right. Uh, and uh, your, regarding your equity dilution question, the standard venture capital tech business uh, dilutions that happen across the first and second rounds apply to us as well. Right. So you haven't done anything extraordinarily different in that sense. Uh, I would like to believe that we are still uh, less diluted compared to some of the other companies out there in right. the tech space. Right. So going ahead from here, as far as your expansion plans are concerned, what are you going to concentrate on? Because uh, the opportunity is huge and right. uh, you're targeting already tier one and tier two cities and right. towns. So looking at the road ahead uh, right. with 400 million students in both rural and urban areas for right. the asking, yeah. uh, the number of exams growing, yeah. um, the entire education setup getting so competitive, uh, what are the targets that you've sent, uh, set for yourself by way of expansion of uh, subscriber base mm -hmm. and uh, the path to profitability that you're looking at? Sure. So right now we are at a 2 million subscriber base. Uh, I think this 2 million number can easily go up to 40 million in the sh like medium term over the next 3 to 4 years. And at scale, I think at least 75 to 80 million users in India should be trying out Topper. Right. So that's the roadmap for our user base. Right now we are present in 12 cities with a sales force. Uh, I think we will be present in close to 40 cities by next year end. Do you think there could be an organic uh, growth as well because and already you acquired Munch in 2016? Is that uh, what happened? Yeah, we, we acquired two teams uh, in the edtech space. One, an IIT Jodhpur team called Easy Prep right. and another was an IIT Bombay team called Munch. How uh, did that help? So, I mean, all of us were building for the same user, like different flavors of product, right? And we believe that all of us together can build something much, which is larger than the sum of parts. Right. Because we are ultimately building for the same user, similar need. Right. Right. So just like uh, we, we felt that the team together can build more. And that's been the case, you know, we've, uh, the three teams together, Topper, Munch and Easy Prep are building much faster, much bigger and a much better product. Right. And uh, how's the competitive landscape looking right now? Because again, like I said, uh, the edge needs to come from the experience, from yeah. the product that you're putting out yeah. there. Uh, if you're going to keep that edge, uh, how yeah. do you plan to do that? Uh, yeah. Considering this is an ongoing case, you have to it's consider uh, repeatedly build on the product. Sure. Yeah. So I think uh, ultimately the consumer decides based on on the product, right? Not on, not based on your advertising or on your sales team or nothing, right? So ultimately, product wins, and uh, we we aggressively pursue certain product metrics that help us know where we are, right? Uh, the two metrics that are really important to us are engagement mm -hmm. and retention. So our engagement metrics are like students spend 100 minutes per active day uh, on a, you know, so they're spending more than one and a half hours on a daily basis. This is beyond their school time, right? So they come back and are spending the time on the app learning. So that's, that's, that's a lot. Right. Uh, so we believe that we are beating our competition by a huge margin on the engagement part. Mm -hmm. uh, on the retention part also, we, you know, it's, it's slightly technical, but you know, there's a D90 retention on the 90th day, how many users come back? Ah, right. Uh, so on that, in that specific period, one third of our users come back. Right. On a single day, which means that, you know, like close to maybe 80-90% users are coming back every month. Right. Uh, so the, com a combination of these two, high engagement and high retention makes a product like much more relevant for the user and we believe that we are in that spot. Now we just have to get more users. You have been in business since 2013. Uh, the user base is growing and the opportunity, like I said, uh, is very much there. The product is uh, the only edge you have as uh, far as engagement is concerned. You've got 100 minutes per day clocked in already by yes. some of your users, yes. so, uh, which is a great sign. So the signs look good and uh, the business is uh, swimming along. So thank you very much for joining us and great okay. luck for the future. Thank you. Thank you. That's uh, Zishan Hayat of Topper. Of course, there'll be many more entrepreneurs here on Rising Stars in the future. So do keep watching from me and the team. Bye-bye.